So hello everybody, it is Power Week, meaning that the Power BI team has released the September 2020 desktop update and it's also Ignite, so there is like a million news out there on Power BI, Azure and you name it, anything Microsoft. So what we're going to do in today's video, I'm going to go through all the announcements related to Power BI fairly quickly. So you can then go on the links that I'm going to post down below and read more about the ones that interest you, okay? So stay tuned, there's a lot of updates. <laughs> Let's get started. Okay, so Power BI has been tightly integrated with Teams, nothing weird there. And uh, a lot of things happening. Power BI will be available as an app in Teams. This is something that you have to add yourself and you need to not only add it once, you need to pin it if you want it to stay there. You will be able to do, once you do that, you will be able to search Power BI content on Teams. So on the Teams search bar, you just write at Power BI and then you search for something and it will search content for Power BI. You will be able to share links to reports directly on Teams and you will be able to start a chat on Teams in Power BI. So while you are on Power BI service, you will be able to start a chart on a specific report on Teams, which is quite nice. And you will be able to discover Power BI reports directly in Teams. You need to go to Power BI service. Really neat, actually. Now that everybody is in Teams working, the integration with Power BI, I think is a brilliant update. So check it out. It is rolling out. So if you when you go and check it out now you might not have it just wait a few days and it, it will roll out to you too the next update i want to talk about is the smart narratives so smart narratives is basically a text box that you drop into your canvas and it will read the information that you have in the canvas and create text out of the visualizations um, you will be able to summarize the text in case you think there is too much you will be able to customize it and the text box is sensitive to cross filtering so if you are picking something from the other charts then the text on the text box will update accordingly so give it a go i haven't tried it yet so let me know what you think once you try it okay more hololens for power bi so you will be able to have these cool hololens glasses you will see the video behind me and you will be able to see Power BI reports live. And this is quite cool for, for example, manufacturing environments where you're going through, for example, machines and seeing the performance of the machines or stock or... So I know it's a little bit in the future, but still quite neat. The next one, and for me, probably this is going to be the update of the year. They are changing the licensing of Power BI, not changing it, but adding one. Do you remember what we requested Power BI little license for a hundred million years ago? Well, there is now a premium capacity, a premium license per user. Before premium licenses were given per capacity, now it's going to be given per user. There are no detailing prices. What they say is that in the beginning through the beta phase is going to be free, but then it was going to cost something. And they haven't released any prices. Not very sure what it means exactly what the model looks like, but it will be able to give you, for example, access to paginated reports and to a lot of uh, premium features that before for small and medium companies were too costly. So great great update. If Microsoft is serious about making data culture available for everyone, this is one step in the right direction, for sure, for sure. So let's wait for pricing and, and more information about the actual capabilities. Now, they have released a, or they have done some performance tuning when you're using Synapse and Power BI, or Synapse, I don't know what it's called. So if you're using those two combined, you will see faster speeds. There is a new diagram view for Power Query, which I don't know, I, I didn't use integration services that much, but it reminds me a, a little bit of that, where you have like a visual representation of the steps. And uh, I have to try it. I, I'm, I don't know if I like it or not. Let's wait for it to release and let's see. I, I think it takes too much space, but, but we'll see. The, 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 it is coming anyhow. Um, data source impact analysis. So 
what this means is basically that you have data source and then you now can see which reports have been built on top of that specific data source. And if you have a data certified data set, you can go to the other users and say, hey, why don't you use these instead of going directly to the source? Also will allow you to see, again, which reports are connected to the data source and have better management of your capacity of Power BI and then make sure people are using the data sets that you want them to use. Um, so if you are in a big enterprise, this is a, a good update for you. Now, sensitivity levels will be applied to Excel on Live Connect, and they're going to be also available on Power BI Desktop, something that it was not done before. The layer, now this is on Power BI Desktop. The, you know when you are putting uh, things on top of each other on Power BI, and then suddenly just they're hidden in the back when you click on them, that's not going to be an issue anymore because there is a toggle that you can turn on. So it will keep the layering that you have specified, which is wonderful actually. So this is going to be quite neat. It was very, very annoying. And uh, what more? You will be able to search for a workspace while publishing your Power BI desktop report into the cloud. So if you are a big enterprise and you have a lot of workspaces, now you can search. Neat, neat, neat. More, we're not ready yet. Total labels for stack visuals. Oh. <laughs> Finally, no more tips and tricks on that. So you can just toggle it on and then you have totals. Thankful. That's really, really good for the mobile. Uh, there are quite a few updates. You can turn off grid and snap to grid. Uh, you will be able to have, you will have an improved navigation if you're using iOS, Apple phone, and then you will be able to share your reports directly from the phone, both, both for Android and iOS, okay? Now, this is for those of you that are using Power BI app on Windows, not on your phone, on Windows. So this is on the Microsoft Store, so if you're using that, there is a slide share capability. So now you can auto play the slide share. So it will just run all the time. If you're using the analyze in Excel capability, be happy now because instead of downloading an OCD file, like a connection file, it's actually going to download now a true Excel file. So you can just go and work directly on it without doing anything else. So there are some new connectors introduced. I'm going to tell you the most important ones, which is CDS, the common data source or service. Common data service, I think it's called. You have the Maria database. It's a very, very used uh, database. There is open source. So you have a connector now, which is great. And then uh, Azure or Azure Databricks. And last but not least, there is a Spanish Power BI community. So if you're Spanish speaking, you can now ask your questions in Spanish. And this was actually an initiative by Miguel Escobar. So thank you, Miguel, really, really cool. So if you prefer to ask your questions in Spanish, now there's no reason for it. So just go there and contribute, ask, help. So this is all for today. Let me know which one is your favorite update. For me, it's for sure the premium for everyone. Let's see the details, but for now, it sounds like that. And um, yeah, curious about yours. I will have chapters on the video so you can jump on there. I will have links to where I found this information. So just read, enjoy and thrive. I'll see you again tomorrow, actually, because today's video will be moved for tomorrow and then on Friday again. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.